What do I need to know about the College Council? Hello again, my name is Lise Betteridge and I'm the Registrar and CEO of the Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers. Welcome to part three in our series, The Three R's of Serving on Council. In part three of this five-part series, I'm going to take you through the roles and responsibilities of the College Council. Please read the information we've provided about Council on our web pages, as this is a highly detailed but very important part of this series. Council is the 21-member governing board and board of directors that manages and administers college affairs. Council is composed of seven elected social work members, seven elected social service work members, and seven public members appointed by the Ontario government. The role of the appointed or public members is to bring the public perspective to council discussions. Elected or professional members are there to bring their practice experience and expertise, not to advance the interests of their professions or their district. Therefore, all members of council are essentially public members. Why? Because all 21 members make policy decisions through the lens of the college's public interest and public protection mandate. It's important to note, when a decision has been made, all council members accept and support that decision and adhere to the duty of confidentiality regarding council business. Council members participate in setting policy direction, but once a decision has been made, council speaks with one voice, typically through the president of council or the registrar and CEO, not through individual council members. Council members do not express, explain, or communicate the business of council to stakeholders, including the media or members in their district. That's the duty of the president or the registrar and CEO through the college's approved communications channels. What does the council do? Council makes decisions in accordance with its primary mandate to serve and protect the public interest. This includes developing policies to regulate the practice of social work and social service work which reflect the college's public protection mandate and governing and managing the affairs of the college by establishing goals and policies in accordance with relevant legislation and our mission, vision and values. Essentially, the role of council is to focus on the why and when, not the how. The how is operationalized by staff under the leadership of the registrar and CEO. Code of Conduct. Council members must adhere to the College's Code of Conduct, which sets out the standards of conduct governing their professional and ethical responsibilities. Members of Council are responsible for applying an appropriate standard of conduct and acting in an ethical and professional manner. The principles set out in the Code, which I'll go into in more detail shortly, are founded on the professional and ethical values approved by the College and are there to ensure that the College's primary duty to serve and protect the public interest is upheld. It addresses principles of good conduct, collegial responsibility and personal conduct. All prospective candidates for election to Council should be aware of these important principles as they will support and guide members of Council in their collaboration with colleagues. Confidentiality. Members must act in accordance with the confidentiality provisions in the Act. They must not disclose information that the College considers to be confidential. And they must follow the College's communication policy and protocols for communicating with the media. Conflict of interest. Members must act in accordance with the College's conflict of interest policy and any applicable legislation and identify, declare and avoid conflicts of interest. A conflict of interest is a situation in which an individual has a direct or indirect private or personal interest sufficient to influence or appear to influence the exercise of their duties. This could include the following, a direct or indirect financial interest of the individual, organizations to which an individual or a member of their immediate family has a direct or indirect obligation, a professional or personal relationship, or an individual or a member of their immediate family holding a position in another organization which involves duties to that other organization. Actual influence is not required in order for a conflict of interest situation to exist. It's sufficient if there's a reasonable apprehension that there may be such influence. Transparency. Members should ensure that proceedings and meetings are conducted in a manner that's transparent. Members should also act in a transparent and accountable manner regarding their personal and professional actions. Fairness and courtesy. 
Members have an obligation to comply with principles of procedural fairness and natural justice, and to act impartially in the conduct of proceedings, both in matters of law and in their attitude. Members must treat colleagues with dignity and respect and in a manner that builds trust. Compliance with laws. Members must be familiar with legislation, policies and directives that apply to their work and the work of the college. Members must act in accordance with the Act, regulations, bylaws, and all other applicable laws. And members must not commit or condone an unethical or illegal act or invoke another to do so. Accessibility. Members must treat those who appear before the college fairly without discrimination, harassment, or favoritism. Members must be aware and respectful of social and cultural differences and respect diversity. Members must be sensitive to potential barriers to accessibility and conduct all business in accordance with the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Timeliness. Members must take all reasonable steps to ensure the proceedings are concluded in a timely manner, avoiding unnecessary delays and cancellations of proceedings. Quality and consistency. Members must be fully prepared for council and committee meetings and proceedings expertise and competence. Members must commit the time and effort required for the work of the college and maintain a high level of professional competence and knowledge in order to fulfill their obligations and duties as council members. Integrity. Members must act with honesty, integrity and ethical standards and conduct themselves personally and professionally in a manner that maintains public confidence. Collegiality. Members should strive to foster a collegial working environment. This includes demonstrating respect for the views and opinions of other members, sharing their knowledge and expertise with other members, and not commenting publicly on another member's decision or conduct. Objectivity and impartiality. Members should approach their work in an objective manner and be free from outside influence in decision making. This concludes part three of our five-part series. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the role and responsibilities of council. In part four, we'll focus on what's involved in being a council member. <laughs>